right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Please subscribe to the channel. Please. Hey guys, YouTube's got an algorithm and it'd really, really help us out a lot if you could like, comment, and subscribe. This is how we can get more information out to more people and uh, share the message of Toronto real estate. In Thanks. In that order, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the damn bell. Great levels here, bye. Levels you got there, buddy. Hey, bye. Hey, Mr. TK. <laughs> right on. What's happening? Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in your life, Daryl. Happy Mother's Day. We had to yep. uh, fire another intern yesterday. Okay. Scheduling okay. mishaps all over the place. That's okay. Scheduling mishaps happened. They happened. That's it. They happened. That's the whole mis they mishap happen. part of them. The, the, hap the happen and the mishap. They mishappened. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So no big deal. No um, big deal. How's everything else though? Can I tell you a little story? Can yeah, I, can well, I, I'm listening. Can I tell you a story of why most people are not landlords? I've got, I've got a list of why people shouldn't be landlords. And a list of why I never want to own a dog. But today, we're going to share a little story, maybe two, about why people are not all landlords. Definitely, they are not all landlords. Otherwise, they all would be. Well, it seems like when you take over a new property, all of a sudden, all these new issues come up for all the tenants that didn't seem to be there before, the week before. So yep. I, get, I get a call from a new tenant in a, in a new building. And... Um, I don't know what's wrong. Please, sir, you have to help me. I don't know what's wrong. Our electrical bill is $2,000 more than normal. Oh, well, don't you have your own meter? Yeah. Well, so what changed since I bought the property last week? <laughs> I don't know. I need you to come here and I need to get into the electrical room to see the meter. No problem. I'm, I'm, coming, I'm coming that way. I'm going to come there just to help you out. Mm -hmm. so I'm on my way and about 10 minutes in he's like I, when are you going to be here I, I gotta go I'm like I'm coming to meet you I told you I'd be there in half an hour it's been 10 minutes I'm on my way yeah. so then I get another text 10 minutes later you're going to have to talk to my sister I had to go it's an emergency so I get there and I'm like your brother told me you got a problem here come with me oh no I don't speak English so good you have to <laughs> deal with my brother <laughs> I'm like, but your brother just told me to deal with you. Yeah, he's not here right now. I'm like, oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> what did they? What did they leave plugged in? I don't know what the hell could make such a. They think somebody's tapped into their uh, into their meter. Yeah, of course. S somebody all of a sudden has tapped into their meter. Many, many interesting stories in the should, first should I, week. Should I tell the utility story as well then that I got? Two weeks ago? I think you should. I mean... What's the most expensive water bill you've ever heard of? Ooh, I just got a good one. I mean, we just had a, a hockey Not this rink one. in the backyard. Not this one? No. Okay, so do you want me to guess a number? In Toronto. Yeah, it's, it's a game. For a house. Okay, let's say a I'm going to go crazy. $2,700. So the most expensive one I ever had was $900. And that was because I left... My whole, my, when I put in the cedar hedges, I had a timer on and I messed up the timer and it was just flooding the whole thing for a couple of days, right? It's a $900 bill. And I was upset. I was Imagine if furious. it was $2,700. <laughs> Imagine if it was $2,700. So the guy says to me, well, I, I have an $8,100 water bill. And I said, you know, he's got some other stuff that he's going, that is, that's got, that's going on in his life. So I said, no, that's your tax bill. They, you just, you owe taxes on your property. So it's at 8,100. He's like, no, it's the water Impossible. bill. And I'm like, bring me the water bill. Let me see your water. <laughs> bill. Show me the water bill. So he shows me the water bill. And apparently he apparently also you have a to pay rink. a water bill. This is a true story. Time, this is a right? true story. He also built a hockey rink last winter. They're suckers. And what happened is he had left. He, I guess he couldn't get the valve all the way closed. And so after he filled it up, 
the water still was coming out of the hose. Some of it landed in his basement, but that's a whole nother story we're not going to talk about right now. But he thought it was just dripping and he thought, how mu- how bad could it be? And he got an $8,100 water bill. $8,100? $8,100 water bill. And, this, and the way the city is in this type of stuff... Like you're paying that water bill. Oh yeah. You're they're not, not they're yeah. they're not they're not like I'm so sorry, like you've got diverted towards your house and we, you know, we want to make sure that you can afford it and we're gonna ensure that you don't have any, you know, bills or interest. No, you're paying the eighty one hundred dollars or else we're gonna tack on more money and then put it onto your um title. Yeah, unless you're York University, you don't have to pay your water bill. Did you hear that whole thing? It must have no. been a year or two years ago. They owed like millions of dollars in water bills that they weren't paying because they were like disputing one charge or something. Yeah. And well, they you have think better they lawyers than off? you and I. Well, I mean, listen, my water bill, I used a lot of water. My water bill went crazy this, this winter. Like crazy. So what was it? It was 500 bucks. Mine? No, it was definitely over a thousand bucks. Like okay. I want to say 1500 bucks. My okay. son takes extraordinarily long showers as well. Yeah. How long? I, What's a long shower? I don't even know half the time. I, I'm, I just look at my clock and I go, I think he's been in there for like an hour. I should stop this. Wow. I never had a long shower before. Well, see, it. most people, most people have a tank in their house, a hot water tank, right? And mm-hmm. they run out of hot water after a while because the tank empties. But we have one of those tankless systems. So mm-hmm. there's unlimited supply of hot water. So I know when I was young, I would take a long shower and it would just crap out. 20 minutes. You got to get out. It's cold. See you later. Sayonara. All of these. You're dreaming, of, dreaming of unlimited hot water. Oh, one home. day I'll be able to afford unlimited hot water. A tank and- so big. And that all the, the water in the world will fit in it. And the house too, or just the tank? Because these prices Listen, are getting crazy. Sometimes you gotta just dream really small. Listen, you know? I keep, I, I keep, I keep warning my kids. Like, yeah, be ready to live in an apartment. Like, yeah, it's all gonna be inclusive. hard to have a house like we're living right now. You better get ready to live in an apartment. These prices are getting crazy. Or be happy yeah. being a renter, or get ready to move. Because yeah, it's get a mobile crazy. home. And look, just the stuff Follow we're the talking weather. about, all this other horse shit that comes along with ownership, right? Yep. It's a lot of money on top of the price is just <clears throat> crazy. It's a life sentence right now. Right now, it life is Life sentence. But it's I, interesting. I, it's interesting because now, uh, once again, of course, and it'll keep coming up and it will keep coming up. And we've talked about it a bunch of times. And it's one of my favorite subjects for some reason. In mm. Toronto, rentals are making more sense than ownership. So forget about all the crappy issues that you got to deal with when you are the owner and all the bills you got to pay and all the problems you got to deal with. Um, it's Financially, it's starting to make more sense to rent, at least according to this article. I, I mean, I've mm. been saying it for, I think, the whole time that we've been doing the show. That rental yeah. makes sense, especially... In I think that- there's some confirmation bias in those articles, though. Probably. I mean, yeah. Aren't there always? It's easy. It's easy for me to present the numbers to show you how home ownership will far surpass renting, no matter what type of formula uh, an investor is going to use, right? But an investor, someone who's really maybe more seasoned than I am and really understands, you know, different index funds and stuff like that, they probably could present the numbers um, in favor of their point. So. I watched a really interesting video today, yesterday, I don't know when, I forget. And it was talking about how um, housing is really a commodity, right? It's, It's a necessity. It's something that we all need, but we treat it more like, um, we treat it more like, like, like a tradable asset, like a stock almost now, right? Or at Mm -hmm. least a lot of people do. It, It, And and so the values are getting all crazy. But at the end of this video, it kind of made a good point for, you know, understanding why prices have to go up, why they have gone up and why they continue to go up for a long time. To the moon. To the moon. But then out of nowhere, who would have thought that the thing that might cripple the market, not the government, right? Not the Bank of Canada. 
not TK. Urban Zen Girl, possibly. But what's it going to be? What's going to do it? Lumber prices. Lumber right? prices are fucking up everything. People aren't building. Yep. Steel build right prices. Now. Like all these costs triple. on materials. Steel prices are triple. Everything's gone so crazy that people are saying, you know what? I, I don't want to build my house right now. I'm going to wait and see if prices go yep. down. Developers and if are If you've like, got land... Why would you build right now? It makes no sense. If you wanted to do a renovation, why would you pay these prices right now? Unless yep. you absolutely need space or you're absolutely loaded. But yep. like I, I'm reading a lot about it and the numbers are so crazy. I mean, when I'm doing a performa for a development project, we always try and use today's numbers, knowing that they're going to be completely different later, but they maybe, you know, kind of move together. But at mm. least if they make sense on today's numbers, um, they make sense. At least that's the rationale that everybody uses. I don't really like that. I, I, I try and kind of forecast forward, but you could get killed like that. I mean, look, all construction projects just went up by how much in the last 12 months on top of yep. what they were already going up like crazy in the last few years. Yep. This is this is this is potentially bad and it's going to get worse. Like, I mean. Canada's on lockdown. India must be on lockdown. That is a disaster over there, right? So, like, but the states is opening back up. States is like a party. It's like New Orleans right? every day over there. They're it's, getting their their double doses, and that's it. They're saying, "Okay, let's go back to normal." They listen. Their numbers are way down. Uh, who knows if it's real numbers? But their numbers are way down. Yeah. So, U.S. is like this. India is like the money supply their it's necks the are same really chart. sore they're heading up there that's a tough that's a tough you know situation right they got overpopulation issues and um lack of resources it's, it's a tough uh tough go for them right a now a lot of people yeah so i was talking yeah. to i i have guys i work with in in uh india in, in new delhi and i was talking to him this morning and he said yeah like my friend just died yesterday and we're on mm -hmm. like complete lockdown. We can't even leave like our apartments. Um, mm -hmm. And he said like people have gotten both of their doses of the vaccine and they're still getting sick out there. He said it's mm -hmm. a disaster. We'll he said that they yeah. had to like help. The vaccine. Give... The... Ooh. Remember, the, you know, it's a little bit different regulated, right? In different countries, right? Where they can say, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the vaccine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the vaccine. Come get the vaccine. You know, Hold on, I'm people, just going to take a sip of my vaccine. Yeah, people feel like that's, uh, you know, that's what's going on. So yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't use those anecdotal stories to dispute the science on it. No disputing science here. I mean, this is a very yeah. scientifically based show and we want to keep it Absolutely. that way. So yeah. get your head out of the gutter. Our sponsors have specifically asked us to keep things in line with the government's stance on COVID-19 vaccines. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. This this message has Sponsored been brought to you by, by Pfizer. the government <laughs> of Canada and Pfizer. <laughs> Macklem. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a guy who knows what's going on. Hey, what about yeah. CMHC? That was an interesting prediction this week. Do you like that? I love these guys. Yeah, I love these guys. They're just... Uh, what did they say now? 14% growth. Prices are going to stabilize in 2023? Yep. What we're, does that we're mean? on the way to the moon. Let's go. They're going to stabilize as in like, we're going to go fucking bananas until 2023. And then we're going to like go back to normal seven to 10% a year growth. Yeah. They've got to, they've got to, I guess, um, show the world that they're going to be responsible and that they can handle a crash. And that even if the worst case scenario happens, everything's going to be okay. And now we need more foreign investment to come in. So anybody who's looking at investing in Canada, if you want to know what the Canadian housing market um, situation is, the resource is CMHC. No one's watching the Toronto real estate show when they're, when they're investing from Europe or Asia or, or the United States. Nobody's asking, you know, even what some of the banks are saying. They're going right to CMHC and trying to figure out, you know, that's the resource. That's where the reports are coming from. And uh, so now CMHC needs to be able to. It's the government. They said that they can handle. They can. They can handle exactly. They can handle a, a crash. They're right. So it's it's very stable. And now they're saying the outlook is going to be great. So you know, bring your money here, investment here, buy our buy our bonds, buy into our uh, economy. Let's get the Canadian dollar up and let's have. 
um, you know, that global trade business back online again. And that's, and that's a part of it, right? That's, well, that's, so here, that's always going to be their mandate. So, so let's, let's do a hypothetical here. Sure. Let's say a year ago I came to you and I said, TK, come, let's talk. I think in my office, I think I know what I'm talking about. Okay. And I have all this data that most people don't have. I know something, TK. Price is going to crash by 18% for sure. This is crazy what's going on. Trust me. Now, apparently I was wrong, okay? Like completely wrong, right? Because what? Prices are not down 18%. I think we can both agree on that, right? So I'm definitely wrong. So now, it's 14 months later, or what is it? I don't know, nine months later, I say, hey, TK. I got a great stock tip for you. I think you should put all of your money into Rivian. What would you, would you listen to me? Would you think that I still had credibility from the last time round? This is hypothetical, by the way. Yeah. Just a hypothetical. I think that CMHC has the luxury of not needing to please the, the little guys with their analysis. Do you think most people remember what was even said by them? CMHC has been ago? wrong. Every 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 account I've ever heard from them has turned out to to be incorrect. But that's not that's not the point, right? The point is they're the ones who have the resources. They're the ones who are insuring our mortgages. They're the ones who they have the hardest data out there. Nobody has the data like CMHC has, right? Like they just have this huge amount of information based off of all the mortgages that they're able to um, to insure. And that gives them this perspective. They're like the gatekeepers, right? And so um, I was reading some of the numbers that they've got um, uh, recently. And, uh, you know, it seems like there's a lot more stability, right? There's a lot more stability than what people are, uh, you know, maybe expecting, right? Stability. Everybody thought that there was... Stability, there's stability. People are paying numbers? their bills. There's oh. people who have, there's people who are on five-year fixed. I think there's 77% of people are on a, on a five-year fixed mortgage, which means that they've locked in those low rates. So even if rates do go um, up in the next year or two, it's not like a huge group of people are all going to be forced to start paying those higher uh, monthly payments. They're, they've got a huge leeway to be able to figure out what they need to do with their property. So yeah, CMHC is going to come out and say, hey, you know, it doesn't look like the market's going to crash in the next couple of years because how is that going to happen? If all these people were just qualified, we just stress test them. We just ensured that they had their jobs in order and that they're not affected by COVID and that their credit's good and that they got the equity and everything else. And now they're on a fixed five-year term, which is all within the last 12 months, which means these people can pay those payments for, the, for, the, for another four years. So even if those rates do go up, is this really going to have an impact on the market? And that's the data that they're looking at now. And they're saying, no, the answer is no. That's It's not going to have a, an impact because the only way that prices go down, and we said this like episode two, is when the, the buyers no longer have the capabilities to purchase properties. And then a seller is in a position where they have to take a lower price. Otherwise, the buyers can all disappear. But if all the sellers are doing okay and they don't need to sell, they're not going to sell. Yeah. And we go into a stalemate and they wait until the buyers return. And we've been in those markets and houses take a lot longer to sell, but they eventually sell and we don't have crashes, right? I haven't seen one. That market? No, crashes. Oh, crashes. No. It's uh, okay. So we're in it every day and we're human so we think everything revolves around us so we think that everything revolves around the real estate market but like if we chunk this market down or this economy down and we go okay uh -huh. how many people are there in ontario how many homes are there in ontario how many five million i think how many new homes get built how many right um and how many people are actually buying houses versus how many homes there actually are total like what is the percentage that all of this affects for us it's our daily lives it's our livelihood yeah. you know but most people the most people they they go to school they get a job they buy a house and they don't think about it they spend the rest of their life paying for the house 
and maintaining the house and making the new fence and renovating the house <laughs> and staying yeah. in the house and not knowing what their house is worth and not giving a shit and then dying and passing down the house to the next generation. That is like beyond the majority of the people, right? Yep. Most people don't have to move. Most people want to move. Most people so are not investing people, in their homes. Most people are buying yeah. a house to live in, right? Usually people don't want to move, right? It's usually 1% of the population is moving. And now, and now it's creeping up to like 2%. So it's like double, right? While no one else is coming A lot more in. people. Yeah. And like 10% of people are thinking about, are trying to move, but they can't get a place. But when, right? when we really chunk it down, like what, like how many people does this really affect on the whole? And it, it's a big story because everybody's talking about it. And it drives the economy, the real estate market, 100%. Maybe yep. 98%. Do you, do, you, do you have the article from uh, Financial Post? Here's why the state of mortgage lending isn't precarious despite fear-mongering about housing markets. I do not. You do not. Would you like to put it up? Should I? If you would like to, I will give you that ability, sir. There okay. you go. Share away. Oh. What? Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Go TK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is a good one, right? Just because it, it, it talks about really what's going on out there. Like This is where I got the 77% overwhelming majority of mortgages, 77% drawn in 2020 were fixed rate, right? So that's a huge number to know that there's going to be a, a lot of people um, fixed out there. 55% of recent buyers, first time home buyers, right? They deposited 21% on average since they were motivated to avoid the mortgage uh, insurance cost. Mm. Right? Um, wow, that's a that's lot. Not... Delinquency rates. Right? So this is through mix and stuff like that too. But very like mix are going to have a higher delinquency rate than banks normally. But you can see like we're pretty consistent here. This is uh, Q2 uh, 2020. So prior to uh, the pandemic. I know that uh, you know this rate is really unchanged, so like we're still at a like super low number for the delinquency rates to have to really make any impact on what um, you know how much how much uh, inventory is going to come onto the market. It have to be a lot higher than that. We'd have to be be in a you know single digit percentage, not not point zero zero point zero two percent or sorry point zero point two two percent in order for that to be able to change. Um, does anything, yeah, so just, does anything point just to, to give prices you some more, coming down? No, nothing. 90% of homeowners are delighted with their purchase. And, and, and look, back to what I was saying, like the reality is most people don't move. The value of their house just goes up and nothing even comes of it. Yeah. Nothing even comes so, of it maybe till the next generation. Yeah. So there's, there's, just, not, there's just not enough... Just, um, there's desperation not. out there for the market to change. And that's, and that's a problem. Now, that being said, and, and we've, we've talked about this before because I think you were asking me the logic behind again. it. Why, why, you know, selling at the beginning of the year, we were talking about it and you were saying, well, if the market's not going to go down, why is it such a great time to sell? The market may not go down and we may not see prices decrease. We've already seen it, which we're going to talk in our stat show on, excuse me, on Monday. Tomorrow. Prices have actually gone down already. Okay, the average price of a home in April went down compared to March. Yeah. Very small amount, seven thousand dollars. Yeah. The average price for both. Okay, condos are starting to rise, but the average price is, has gone down. And the houses that I was selling in March could not get the prices that they got in April. And there's lots of examples of people on the market at those prices. And I think that the reason was because if I'm gonna be getting 10, 20, 30 offers on a property. That buyer, you know, the emotions, the the um, competition, you know, the leverage that we have in negotiations has enabled us to be able to get a price way over and above what it should. And it was a, a peaked point from January to March. We saw a peak in the market and now that, that peak is no longer there. And this may not be able to be quantifiable for a while till we can see it. And there's definitely certain markets where we haven't hit the peak yet. 
There's definitely markets right now that are selling today higher than what they were in March. But I know markets, uh, specific places, mostly in the 416, where we're no longer seeing those prices anymore. So there's Canadian just- real estate is past peak momentum, says big six bank economists. So are yeah. you saying the same thing as the big six guys? Are you saying well, they usually that get their information from me? They usually they usually call me before they release that. Oh yeah, yeah, it says that right here. Okay, it says yeah, that. Yeah, they gave you credit. One of the Look cold at that. Notes. But but yeah, like I mean, they they obviously know it way more than I would because they're looking at applications and all that kind of stuff too. But there are definitely there's definitely areas that I'm seeing that the peak is not there yet, and I, and I'm watching prices increase. Peak, and I'm like, like we came down for one month, month to month, like a, a a tiny little bit. That's not like over the hill and then on the way down again. Like we just started yeah. this momentum up again. Actually, yeah. that's not but, true. The momentum up never stopped. Just sales point pace is, is crazy. But the point is, when inventory hits that 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 complete standstill where there's nothing available whatsoever and you put your house on the market. Yeah, maybe the market would continue to go up. Maybe the average prices will go up. But maybe that one month when you put up your property for sale, all the buyers come, all the offers come, and you get a price way over and above. Or maybe you got some issues with your home that you know are cosmetic and that you know, nothing you need to disclose, right? Um, patent material defects, stuff like that. That's right in front of people's faces that they can see with their own eyes. Dead body and, um, right? Right. Bodies in the basement, what'd you say? You don't have to disclose that. What what is it? Dead bodies in the basement. Dead bodies in the basement. Yeah. Don't no disclosure. No, no disclosure. Issue. Okay. So maybe now someone's not gonna do a home inspection, right? So therefore you're able to get a lot more money because you had competition where the prices can continue to go up in the neighborhood, but if it becomes a less competitive market and now you accept an offer with a home inspection, you'll end up with less because now you you're forced to do the repairs, right? So just little things like that too. So you have to take everything into account. And when the market's hot, that's the time to sell. That's the time to go. Pack your bags and go. Well, people if have... you're planning on moving out and, and leaving the country, the province, or going into a home that you already own or, or a rental. Right. Yeah. So people use yeah. the argument like, where the hell am I going to go? The market's so hot. Everything's so expensive. Yeah, if you're buying, it's a different story. And you got to work with a professional to assess your situation because there's no one size fits all. Not in a no. million years. Listen. I have people selling first right now. I got people buying first right now. Both of them are right. Both of them are doing the best thing for them. Both of them, it's going to work Both of those out. scenarios are right now? Because before it was, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was buy something first before. Because Why? Isn't that what you, we, you and everybody were telling buyers? Well, I'm, I'm saying sure that that's a, very common, first? that's a very common approach. But Don't if worry. you had sold in March and you had hit the peak market, and now you're laughing because you got all your money and you're seeing properties without offer dates. You're competing against less people. You just won. You're now going into a much softer market and you capitalized on selling in March. So selling first was the right move. Do most people care if they buy a house and it goes down a little bit in the first while? Do most people give a shit about that? Not really. Most, people, like, am I yeah. right? Like most of your clients, they're just buying the house to live in the house. They're not. Like, I agree. I agree. There I'm are asking, people I'm who not... obsess about there are people who obsess about it more than they should. Like do people call you and go, Oh my god, TK, what the hell did you do? You ruined my life. My house just went down thirty grand. We just bought it. What did you do, TK? I haven't had that call. Um you know, so you have I, a but also the there? markets that I've been working in for a long time have been, you know, pretty bullish. But the um call where it's we sold our house. And then, of course, three months later, the house prices are selling for a lot more. Those come up more often TK, because now we, why did we you set, let us sell we it set so- the record on the street. So the neighbor then goes and sells his house. And of course, he gets more a month later. Right. The market's gone up. Right. He says, I want more. The buyers say, well, they paid this much. The market's gone up. I'll pay more. Why so that's a know? more common. Why scenario. didn't you know? That's what why I didn't I know. know. Why you should have told you know? me to hold off. It's like, but if but if it goes down, guess who's the hero? Oh, thank you, Tiki, for telling me. When, uh, when the good time to sell was. Thank you so much. Right? I see no so scenario. The, the answer is we use the best information we got to give the advice we can. And I'm, I'm super conservative. So I always, I'm, I'm never looking at the high risk situation as to, uh, you know, take a chance or gamble or anything like that. So, but how, okay. So now boots on the ground, gut feeling, TK, the man out there every day in the overalls, like a fireman putting out fires. Overalls, fireman. What? Is it getting softer? Do you feel yeah, for it's sure, hundred percent. 
Do you feel it? Softening? Less showings, less offers. More prices than haven't started week? to come down. More than and sellers aren't going to take less. More than last week. Like, okay, we were at like 50 offers on everything yeah. All that's four done. weeks ago. Then like two well, weeks done. ago, you guys were like, there's still like seven offers. And then last week, I think we were still... Yeah, like, I had three offers this week on one. As long as there's more than one, it's like good. Yeah. And now what are we saying? <laughs> now where are we I had at? three. I had three this we'll week. We'll accept a conditional offer today. So let's do the deal of the week. Oh, is it time um, for the so I had one deal that of was the week? Deal of the week. This was only two offers. Deal two. of the week. TK's deal of the week. No, I think this one was three, too. Okay. So this was the condo in Markham. And um, I had to list it three times before I got it sold. How many square feet? Okay. How many bedrooms? Give us a little it, bit. It bathroom. was 1,400 square foot, $650,000 condo with a $900 maintenance fee. Oh, it's at a 7825 Bayview. <laughs> Hold on a sec. How, how much? It was at uh, 7825 Bayview. Oh, I know yeah, people that, that live condo. in that Remember building? I talked to you about it before? So in 2019, I go and meet the lady. As I'm meeting her, we go down, we see the units tenanted. We go down to the lobby. She says, okay, I want to sell it. Let's go. And we started talking. She says, oh, by the way, right before I met you, I just signed a one-year lease with my tenant. I really I like him. He's a great this. guy. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what? Oh. <laughs> How much is the lease? And she's like, seventeen hundred. Yeah, it goes for a little bit more, but he's a really nice guy. And they're twenty five hundred dollar a month rentals. So it's way under market. So I'm like, okay, like let's see if anybody's really desperate to get in because it's actually a great model with a great view and everything. I spent a few weeks. I told the tenant, look, I'm not gonna drag you through the mud here. No one wants to buy you with a, a one year lease. And if you're not gonna give up on the lease, then let's just take it off the market. So we took it off the market. The next time we listed it was March 2020. And he's in the medical field. So we had like one showing COVID hit. He's like, no more showings is done. So again, I gave it another week of seeing if anyone wants to buy it sight unseen, <laughs> took it off the market. Yeah. So finally it was all, he, he bought a place, he moved on and uh, uh, he was still living there, but he, he gave his notice and the landlord seller said, okay, let's get it sold. So um, we priced it well and we had a few offers and it sold. Um, we had the status certificate, so it was a firm offer, so we didn't have to worry about any conditions or anything like that. So she did really well, but not the competition that we would have got. We priced it close to market value, so we, we ended up a little bit over asking, which was fine, um, and but not the competition feeding frenzy or anything else like that. Everyone was very just like chill about it, right? Also, when we listed, there was um, two units well above us that were not selling. As soon as we listed, they dropped their price and two more units came on the market. So it was all of a sudden a bunch of inventory came up at the same time too. So there was, there was a lot of stuff going on there to make it, um, make it interesting, but we do it with, we did it with the tenants. We had the tent, we had the tenants give us a certain window of time each and every day, followed all the rules. I, ca I called every single agent before they showed, explained to them what had to happen and made sure they were going to follow the rules and be on time and everything. A few slip ups. But uh, in the end, it worked out okay, and that was the deal of the week. So you sold it. So th did you say nine hundred dollars a month in maintenance fees? Yeah, something Holy like that. Holy cow, that's like almost rent for some people. It's all inclusive, all and it's fourteen hundred square feet. That's actually a really good price for square foot. Like meals, <laughs> what you, and liquor. That kind of all inclusive for nine hundred bucks a month. What the hell are you getting for nine hundred bucks a month? How much is You're the mortgage the on that the, thing? How much was maintenance it? Maintenance of the building and all the utilities. How much was the purchase price? Six fifty. Six fifty, and you're paying yeah. nine hundred bucks a month. Yeah. Oh, plus your mortgage. That's not good. The, this whole maintenance fee thing is and taxes. It's horrible. Maintenance fees. It's ridiculous. Maintenance fees are good. You know where in BC, like they don't have the condominium act. And they've got so many issues with um, condominiums problems. going bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah. And then now, now all the insurance that's involved and now they can't even get insurance because insurance tried to fill the void. And now that's all, you know, they've, they've realized that's not a good idea. So it's like, no, I think condominiums should have mandated increases and that it should be higher maintenance costs and that they should be preparing because they don't understand what those costs are going to be 20 30 years from now to maintain those buildings. They have no idea. They think they know, but no one knew that lumber prices were going to go up three times. No. What is if there's a, a global glass shortage, right? And all of a sudden glass becomes impossible to get. How is everyone going to change the glass and fix the windows 30 years from now in these glass towers downtown? Who's going to pay for that? 
Yeah. Have you? Have, did you see? There was a video that went. Uh, viral i don't know how long ago it was everything's a blur nowadays of like a waterfall basically coming down the stairs in, in a bc condo. i don't yeah. know if it was bc or it was, it was bc I mean, it, it was vancouver everywhere. and it was like 2200 dollars a square foot condo <laughs> some asshole like leaves the bathtub running up on the 14th floor and everybody underneath gets like destroyed or a pipe burst what it was. Was it? whatever it is like these things no, happen a, in buildings yeah. that people got like they have to get fixed renovate like my parents live in a building. I can't even believe the amount of money they spent renovating the hallways, the common area, the the wallpaper, and it 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 didn't look any different than after the renovation started. But the but the the fund was dry. Yeah, and they're paying nine hundred and something bucks a month for this garbage. Windows leak. Oh, this is an old building you're talking about, right? Yeah, at Green Lane and Bayview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it well. Yeah, that was my stomping grounds there, Thornhill. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I mean, condos are definitely um, a great investment, and I think that they just need to be planned a little bit better. But it's also the problem is humans get involved. Okay. So I was just I was talking to um, my dad, right, real estate extraordinaire, and uh, he said to me, "It's about a commercial building in Scarborough where the condo corp was taken over, right? So then all of a sudden." Guys buy multiple units, they get proxy votes, and then they start running the show. And they start, according to the owners that my dad's dealing with, who are now getting rid of their units because they don't want to be part of this uh, condo board anymore or, con or part of this condominium unit anymore. And um, apparently these guys are like railroading them and running the place down into the ground and dropping the condo fees so that, you know, they won't have any money and, you know, it's going to ruin the building in 10 years and no one's going to have any money to pay for things. Right. So who knows? I'm three sides of every story. Right. But um, that's the, that's the issue. You don't know. You buy, you buy a condo, uh, you buy into a condominium and the condo board's not well managed. What do you do? No. And wait, wait, wait until you know what's next. You know, what's coming next. That's going to really put a wrinkle in things for a lot of people. Tell me. What's I next? think new buildings are going to get canceled, even more of them. I mean, how can they pro how can they be profitable? They sold years ago, and all of a sudden, all these prices escalate, delays. Mm, so even and the everything. big developments, you think, will get canceled? I gotta think that a few. I mean, look, they have the price guarantees, though. They. I was talking to the concrete guy that I know, and he says that they've guaranteed prices on most yeah, of the buildings that are all. You can't. You can't. You can. They're gonna go bankrupt guaranteeing these prices. That's that's the risk you take though. And these are big companies who have billions of dollars, like the company I'm talking about for concrete. So they've yeah. actually guaranteed it. Like not the ones now, they're two, three times the prices, but hey, the ones that what? they those concrete um, guys are gonna figure out a way to get more money out of that deal. I can guarantee you that. Sure. One way sure. or another, they're gonna make up yeah. in extras and bogus and whatever the hell. They're gonna figure out a way. It's you can't guarantee that many contracts at this kind of an increase. It is crazy. It's gonna. Yeah. It's a. It's a big problem. Look, I get it. It's I know what you're such saying. a big problem that the city of Toronto calls for action against the surging price of construction materials. Like action. ward councilor, ward councilors are going into city hall or virtually yeah. going into city hall. John Corey, get that. Get those lumber prices down. You know what? I gotta say, all up BC. This is the this is actually the ward councillor that's in that that runs the ward where my where my property is in Scarborough and this guy's yeah who is it uh, Paul Ainsley okay yeah. call to arms we got to do something about these escalating prices what the hell can we do about these escalating prices Mister Ainsley this Start is the same mill. guy you should see it's unbelievable this guy's he's bothering me I gotta I gotta yeah. go on a little rant here. It's really sure. bothering me because I don't know if you know, you know Scarborough pretty well. Most people probably don't know it so well, but Guildwood Go Station, mm -hmm. nice big property right beside there. Uh, yeah, the old uh, dealership. The old Hyundai dealership. So a gentleman oh. bought the thing a few years ago for a song, pennies on the song, ridiculous, paid nothing for it, okay? He yeah. takes it in for a development proposal, like went for something reasonable. They completely shut him down, said, no way, this is crazy, way too much density before the ghost station was there. So some other guy comes in, buys it from him, 
Okay, and this is crazy numbers. You want to hear some numbers? This guy paid three point four million, like I don't know, eight years ago. Let's say maybe ten mm -hmm. years ago. I think it's more like seven or eight years ago. Three point four million, did nothing. The Hyundai dealership disappeared. He boarded the place up. He did absolutely nothing. You know what he yeah. sold it for? Thirty-four $40. million dollars. Yeah. Four yeah. million dollars cash. Got his money back. Thirty million dollar VTB whole bunch of interest for the next couple of years and he just boom 30 million dollars out of thin air but now the new guy got like so much more density and so much so so much more height beautiful what it should be right beside a ghost station so what yeah happens? what is it tell me about the development but paul ainsley tweets something like oh look how great we are putting all this new density in and making all these new homes for toronto great sites yeah. in scarborough blah, blah 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 well i mean guess who shut it down a few years ago those homes could already be built for the new go station that's been up for the last two years right there could mm -hmm. already be hundreds and hundreds of apartments already there using the go station but instead we got empty hyundai dealership but the the counselors are like we got to do something about the lumber prices and oh look how great we are we're putting these things on the market they're gonna be here in seven years when we shut it down four years ago five years ago anyways yeah. the city thinks that they can do what tell me okay let's let's brainstorm here a little what can we do about surging material prices? Should we shut the country down maybe? That might help. Let's close the lumber mills. No? What would that do to prices? No, I don't think that's good. Okay. No. Um, let's limit the supply. Let's make sure that developers can't build anything for a real long time. I guess that doesn't really have much of an effect. Does it have an effect? I don't know. Like... If, if builders aren't building because the prices are skyrocketing and developments go bankrupt because the prices are skyrocketing, maybe mm -hmm. th is this the nail in the coffin? Is this something that could take away people's ability to purchase? Because the supply is going to dwindle even more. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't have any ideas here. What, what do you think? What, what, what does the, Paul the, the Ainsley think they're going to do? What are they going to do? <laughs> yeah. I vote to input. do something about these yeah. surging prices. I think, yeah. oh, I got it. This, yeah. this is what they're going to do. Not only what yeah. they should do, this is what they will do. I think we should do a study. <laughs> I think we impact should, study. Do Let's an do an impact, impact study, study on the uh, decrease of the <laughs> supply of lumber, but not Let's just see. any study. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna study everything, and we're yeah. gonna make sure that this takes at least another four years before we <laughs> have this thing figured out. Yeah. Maybe this. Maybe they should do a study on the study. Yeah. Because right. maybe then they'll figure something out. Yeah. Steve Saretsky says this thing is going to go to the moon. You know Steve Saretsky? Okay, yeah. I love that guy. He says no. this thing, like, how can you throw all this money into the system, not plan on stopping, and not have inflation and in assets? Is there a mm -hmm. way? I guess if lumber prices go up high enough and everybody stops building. Yeah. Are people going to stop lending money because the prices got too far out of reach? These are, good. These are great questions. You're giving me as many answers as our last two guests, I'm, TK. I'm not, not I'm, I'm not in the camp of hyperinflation. I'm You're sorry. Not, not in the camp of hyperinflation. Okay, that's no. good. Are, are you in the camp of they are understating the inflation a little bit, maybe? <clears throat> I think that um, people who have PhD in economics understand the economy and uh, the risks of inflation a lot more than anybody I've ever seen on YouTube. So is that actually true though? Like, come on, yes. no, no, no. Let's analyze the statement. There are <laughs> some pretty smart people. I'm not. There, there's a reason why category. they're in those positions, and there's a reason why they have PhDs in economics, and there's a reason why people have no degrees in economics and YouTube channels. You're like one of those guys right? that'll wait 18 hours in line to get a vaccine, right? I can't even believe the lineup I drove by yesterday. I'm in shock. Yeah. It was like Wonderland. 
Can you get yeah, like I a saw, speed pass? Outside too. Everyone's outside. Outside. <laughs> the parking lot is going round and round and round and it's down the street and they're lined up on the 401 Why? waiting for I had, them. I had people getting them in two minutes. My friend just told me the other day he was in uh, Vaughn or something like that. Like 15 minutes from the time he left yeah, his yeah, car, went inside. He had to he, he had to wait 15 minutes in the in the pharmacy. Everybody so had loves to get, a pop-up. Go in. <laughs> i'm like why is everyone waiting outside like on eglinton it was like lineups of cars just four ways uh, flashing lights it was everywhere like crispy like, creams opened it's... again yeah exactly it looks like the crispy cream at Ken- uh, kingston road in lawrence every uh, single day that i've ever driven by it it was like the so. first crispy cream when it opened up in mississauga you've never seen such yeah. a line but it, yeah i'm I never not went kidding like this thing was lined up down the main street i forget where we were i think we were at warden and shepherd or something i don't know yeah. pop up and, and pop what up was funny anything. we were like my, my family we were driving in the car they're all like what's going on here i go it's gotta be a pop-up clinic because yeah. what else could be going on like this otherwise it's illegal to be gathering in those numbers yeah we're like right? it's like the beatles reunited for a concert and everybody was right but there was people out there today like the cars were out there today like it was like a lot of traffic and there was people outside yeah, doing we stuff out. like, like it's a saturday of a nobody's lockdown. listening to the What's lockdown measures on? i think right now anymore Eat. they just have the businesses closed and they're like too bad sorry guys we're not really worried about your your situation like i'll i'll admit this on the air like you know i'm getting haircuts you know safe haircuts you know? I, re- I read an article that says that canadians in the government have like a like a like a little um what's uh, like a uh, like a like a secret in the background yeah. that like you know we'll inflate your house prices and you guys just stay home and we'll give you money and nobody say anything yeah yeah just yeah just let it happen yeah i mean listen if you just, were, just if, elect us just you, elect us next time maybe next I, election just just there, put us it, back into power give us a majority government and we'll be uh yeah we'll, we'll keep doing keep all this for you flowing. yeah but really i mean if you were if you were on the verge of bankruptcy before and you owned a house you're fine now yeah refi yeah. you're good refinance you're okay you're good you can, yeah. and you, you can just got a 20 percent go. bump and take that money out even if you were drowning before now you got equity again i i know pe- I, I i've been dealing with people in that situation where a year ago we were i was looking at their numbers like i don't even know if we can list your house because you owe too much money i don't know if there's enough money to pay out the buyer's agent i'm going to feel bad by taking the listing and he's not going to get paid yeah and uh, now they're like yeah we got another mortgage it's okay talk to us again in a year yeah and we like, don't need to sell we're again. good yeah they don't need to sell i mean you know hopefully they get their life back on track and they don't they don't need to sell at all but the main thing is is that was not an option a year ago i think they're right? just trying to give people enough time to like move over into another segment of the economy figure it out restructure yeah i mean you it have works to. i mean yeah can you imagine like would you still be waiting for your restaurant to open back up again? Like really, Tough, man. No, but yeah. would, would would you be like, I think it's gonna be open, honey. They're gonna open soon. I can feel it. I just a few more weeks. I gotta finish this that's level. Bad, eh? I gotta finish this level. Just that's a bad. few more weeks. Yeah, that's bad. No, there's definitely people right now it's who okay. are struggling. There's money they... coming in. Money's coming in. What do they care? What are they doing though? How are they paying for these bills? What do you mean? You can defer bills. You get you pay bills. You get discounts on bills now, or you have enough money coming in for free. Or between the money that's coming in for free and the cash jobs that you do for your landscape buddy, mm-hmm. you, you're, you're, there's money coming out of people's pockets. Mm-hmm. Like di- didn't you hear? Before the pandemic, people couldn't even you know they didn't have five hundred bucks at the end of the month. Now, after the pandemic, everybody's got twelve hundred bucks at the end of the month, yeah, or more. People have savings yeah. somehow. How can you give somebody? Okay, I think Serb right now is nine hundred dollars uh, every two weeks, so eighteen hundred bucks a month. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Eighteen hundred bucks a month. So maybe if two people in the family are both getting Serb, you get thirty six hundred. How do you pay all your bills and? Not go bankrupt on eighteen hundred bucks a month. Well, you must have had really low bills to begin with. But I want to talk about there's students back downtown Toronto, Daryl. What? There's students back. University uh like U of T and um uh Ryerson. 
students have flooded the downtown market again with rentals into rentals. So, so yes. Nazma, they're tired. They're not living at home. They're not living in um, Trenton and going and going to school uh, online in Toronto. They're saying, mom, dad, I'm moving to Toronto and I don't care if I'm doing online Rents videos from my condo, but right now it's a good opportunity. Rents are cheap and I'm going into a unit and you guys can see me later. You guys can pay for it. Yeah. So we had a condo lease uh, for a long-term investor client of mine. And they did, um, they were getting $3,300 a month. Uh, that was back in 2018. So the tenants left after a few years. So we put it on the market at 2,700. Uh, the tenants came in, they said, look, we're looking to, you know, get into this, uh, into this unit, three students in their last year. So it was good because they were only going to be there for a year. So we were confident that the market was, was going to be going up. We put down the lawful rent as 3,200. We gave them a one month uh, rent discount in the first eight months. So it works out to $2,800 the first seven months, sorry. And then the last five months, the credit is another month. So it works out to $2,500 and change. So averages out to $2,700 all year round. And at the end of the one year, it automatically goes back to the law for rent, which is $3,200. If they decide to stay, we get $3,200. If they leave, then we can put it back on the market and get market rent. So hmm. yeah, all that talk with you with those case studies finally paid off. Finally paid off. Worked. Yeah. And Nasma said in a tweet that downtown one bedroom condo rental comeback. Not sure what's yep. in the air, but all of a sudden a previously dead lease listing. Now in the past two days, we have 10 showings and three offers. What's going on? Yeah. Tenants are back. Yeah, like, uh, that's the, what the I'm Students are back. Of. And then there was also a lot of people messaging me saying, can we get a lease in September? They're getting and leases a lot of them, for next school year. A lot of them were uh, Asian. So a lot of them were, you know, potentially coming from other parts that were, you know, they went home or, you know, wherever they're coming from. So that's, uh, you know, a huge sign right there that people are that's great. coming back. Well, at least they're planning to, right? They're, they're getting yeah. their ducks in a row. Yeah. Well, Ontario sheds 153,000 jobs in April following tightening of public health restrictions. I mean, I don't think that those took jobs a genius. That, that, there the were jobs shitty jobs were anyways, yeah. No, they were just the jobs that were only added back because the, the economy was opening up again. And so, you know, they yeah, tried the to... the same uh, jobs that people lost before. They just... It's we've been like, trading those jobs back and forth for a year now. It's like... Hey... Come on in. Come on in. Just, just kidding. Hold on a sec. Don't come in. Go back. Yet. Go back. Hold on. It's not safe in here. Go back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Come in. You, you, and you. You two, you can't come back. We're not ready for you. Hold on a sec. Nobody come in. We're <laughs> shutting this thing down again. Yeah. Yeah. Over the job, and over. What's the job market that I'm the job market that I'm seeing, and again, it's all anecdotal, but the job market that I'm seeing is that there's a lot of new jobs that have been created by the pandemic. So even though we know that there's jobs that have been lost due the due to the pandemic. But even in those, re like for in a grocery store, there's more people walking around that grocery store than I've ever seen. They're spraying the carts. They're washing their hands. There's like 10 people at the front door when I walk in just to get some groceries. Yeah. Right? Like there are more jobs created that I'm seeing in my daily life. Sanitization managers. <laughs> yeah. Like it's crazy, right? It's crazy how Your many job people is need to, to make be sure in every single location. There is sanitizer everywhere all the time. Right? Sanitizer. Yeah. Everywhere. There's got to be a position like PPE that. PPE monitor. PPE monitor. Yeah. It, 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 there's people that have to just stand at the door and... and... Just click. Okay. Right? Let two more. You can let in two more from the east doors. Two more from the east doors. This is yeah. crazy what we're doing. But, but then there's also there's also just... Again, I want to talk about this because it's it's just been huge in my life as well too. Like I'm going down all these different roads and you know adding in different streams of income and learning new passions and having all this kind of stuff because COVID has been you know one of those types of things. But there's so many people who have transformed their life by either changing careers altogether or adding in all these side hustles and creating other forms of income for themselves. And that's I've it's 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 at an unprecedented rate. Like, it's just it's amazing what even people like motivational speakers, people doing, you know, online Zoom stuff, um, people co offering coaching, you know, everybody's a coach now. I'm a coach. You're a coach. We're all coaches. Everybody's a coach and there's money to be made. I'm paying, I'm paying a nutrition coach right now. I'm paying, I'm paying uh, jujitsu coaches. I'm, I'm paying so many people, you know, every single month to coach me 
You know, I got lots of coaches, right? I so want, if they're making money. I want to make a correction, though. I, I am not a coach. Okay. Thank, You're my development coach. You just don't, I just don't, you don't, I don't pay you anything. I, you, I well, listen, I mean, yes, I am coach to many unpaid people. Yes, you're my land developer coach, yes. and you are not getting paid a, a dime. I but one day you'll get a deal out of me, so don't worry. So I'm worth it. Trust me. You know what? It is not a concern of mine whatsoever. I'm not the big fish in your life, eh? You are. You are not the big stressor in my life. That I can tell yeah. you. Yeah. But I gotta think that there are a lot of people with a lot of stress, and I don't think it's going to wane. But there are lots of opportunities too. Yeah, for those I think at this point in time, there. I'm going to say something harsh here, Daryl. Uh -oh. And you know me, I'm not, I'm not harsh. Is it going to be I like towards to be... me? Harsh towards no, me? No, it's, it's just, it's just to the it. general public. Okay. It's just to the general public. If your business has been shut down for the last year, the, the majority of the months, because the government keeps going in and out, in and out, in and out, and you haven't figured out a way to be able to get back on your feet yet, that's nobody's fault but your own. Ooh, yes, I like it. I like it. There are so many ways that people could have pivoted by now. By now. By it's now. been a year. Like, okay. You knew this was coming and you knew that it may not ever go back to the way it was before. So if you're trying to rely on your old business model from pre-COVID and you're just praying that things are going to turn around one day and you're, and you're blaming the government and you're blaming Doug Ford and you're blaming the guy who ate the bat in China, I think the person who needs to change is you. That's the truth. Yeah. Because that was his God-given right to eat the bat. <laughs> I think that's right? a great place to end the show. Yeah. If Definitely. you well, or anyone else you know wants to eat a bat. Join us Join us next week. We're going to have a stat true. show coming up really soon, the next couple of days. Also, follow us on Twitter. Spotify. Spotify. Instagram. Instagram. YouTube. You're on YouTube, so I you know iTunes. This well, maybe you're not, and you're just hearing this. Um, iTunes. Are we on iTunes? Did I do? I that? don't know, Daryl. I think anywhere are. that podcasts are, just search in Toronto Real Estate Show, and then see if we're there, because we might be. There's a there's a chance. So you don't have to listen to us on YouTube, and then not be able to you know do other things with your phone because you don't want to pay the twenty bucks because you're cheap like me, for the premium account. And you can just get a free Spotify account and listen to us in the car or do it whenever you uh, want to hear your, hear us, hear the podcast. And we really appreciate you listening and joining in on the show. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, we're going to keep doing this every week because the comments are Whether keeping us like going. It or not. That's right. Yeah. Comments. But the Lots comments, we love comments. the comments. Comments yeah. help the show spread. It helps. The yeah. It just makes me feel like we're doing something that uh, people are listening to. I even like though I see the views and I see the subscribers, the comments are awesome. Yeah, I like when people get engaged and I like when people tell me that, you know, they don't agree with me. I love when people agree with me. I th I really <laughs> love when they disagree with you. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. I need anything you want to say about me or Daryl, we're open to and we will uh, happily respond to your questions uh, in the comments or on the show. Or you know? on the and show. shout out to Urban Zen Girl. Absolutely. Again, th she's getting more airtime than me. Yep. Yep, she deserves been, it. She's, she's been it. there since day one. I think she's, we know she's listening on attentively. every single video that we've ever done. Isn't that awesome? That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. She feels great. The well, fire. that's a great show. Enjoy your Mother's Day, Daryl. You enjoy your Mother's Day. You enjoy your Mother's Day. No, you. No, you enjoy your. <laughs> no, you enjoy your Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs>